so many suffering people. How do you know which one to help? The only answer I can give to that, it is always the one the Lord brings in front of me on that day. believe in God. You cannot believe in a deity if you do not believe in miracles. These children have come from such traumatic severe backgrounds. It's indescribable. Each child has a traumatic story. We are not talking here about ordinary children. These children have lived on the street. They know the extremes of poverty. They're just so terribly, terribly abused and my heart just goes out to them and I just feel this compassion just to do whatever I can to help them. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Through light in Africa over these 11 years, we have seen many, many miracles. Mm. Dodgers boy. Dodgers boy. Thank God he came back. We see the poor in spirit every day. The people who have lost hope. That verse is also very, very important to me because that's what I want to do while I'm living on this planet is to give hope to people, for them to believe there is a God who loves you, that there is a God. All you have to do is pray to him. Every year, several thousand visitors trek up majestic Mount Kilimanjaro. But it is at the base of the mountain where a light of hope illuminates all of Tanzania. Oh, was it six? Mm. Faith has guided Mama Lynn Elliot. So Matthew 5. In her divine mission of sharing light for the world to see. And give to the poor. And you will have treasures in heaven. In 2000, she heard a calling from her home in England. And do not hinder them. Just an ordinary day. Ordinary to some, extraordinary for others. And I hear this voice in my head say, go to Africa. And once again, more clearer, more concise, go to Africa. It was a vision she had that helped her go the distance. And in my arms, I was holding a dead child. And Jesus said to me, deliver these children safely into my arms. She answered that call and never looked back, leaving all that she knew and had behind. 
She formed Light in Africa, a nonprofit organization that cares for the homeless children throughout Africa. <laughs> Spreading love, education, and inspiration to all children. And even adults desperate for help. <laughs> While a devout Christian, Mama welcomes, works with, and cares for all, regardless of faith. She is the angel of Kilimanjaro, because what she's doing, we have seen what she's doing. We tend to help her with her internet work, and it's just totally amazing. What is amazing about Mama Lynn is how she weaves the fabric of her community together. People like Eliezer, who is physically challenged, he lost his mother to cancer years ago. Mama Lynn brought him into her family. She offered him training so he could become a shoemaker at her upholstery shop. Giving opportunities for people to grow and accomplish their dreams no matter what their circumstances. It is her gift to Africa to cultivate an understanding and love among all its people. Why did God choose me? A question she can clearly answer today. God doesn't choose the qualified. He qualifies the chosen. <laughs> I think perhaps at some time in some person's life there is a yearning to do more, perhaps a dissatisfaction, a void in their life that materialism cannot satisfy. And that's what we can promise when people come to light in Africa. We can promise you a positive experience. Light in Africa is actually the light for those children who are left on the streets. to change all these bad cultures, like what is happening, what the witch doctors are doing to the albinos, for instance. Black magic, voodoo, call it what you like, but it's only education that will change that. We jump started because the alternator is bad. We haven't had time to fix it. Priorities. People need help. We just don't have children's homes. We have volunteers who come from all over the world. And what they do is they will bring some funding and this allows us to operate outreach dispensaries.
Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, we thank you because of this time. Thank you because you I feel privileged, so privileged to be able to be a part of their lives. Thank you because of Our motto for Light in Africa is our actions speak louder than words. It's because of the flori, flora in, in water. Over 1,000 people have been helped this year alone by free medication, free drugs, free treatment. This cream and the tablets, which cost a thousand shillings or 60, 70 cents, will save her life. This child is 11 years of age and doctor has just diagnosed syphilis. First of all, about child rights. What is your right as a child? This is a huge, huge problem. They do have rights. What about that very important issue that the government has banned? They passed a law to say no, what? No female genital mutilations and no young marriages. FGM, female genital mutilation, which is so big. Now what the Maasai uh, elderly women are doing is cutting babies and children who can't get up and run away. It is only education which is going to change all these things. You know, if you have an educated mother, you have an educated child. As you can see, this child has a uh, head fungi, and this is caused by parasites. So we will today wash his head and then apply the cream. A happy smiley boy! <laughs> Very good. You will receive love, you will receive a smile, you will receive kindness from people. You cannot put a price on that. It is just priceless. For Light in Africa to operate, we really do need a uh, more volunteers to come out over to help us to do this work because uh, we don't have any big companies helping us or any big churches or industries we just totally rely on the, the goodwill of volunteers to bring out funding and most volunteers come to light in Africa thinking that we're going to do uh, all of these things to benefit the lives of others when in fact what happens is it benefits our life. It's very nice to have a neighbour to go across the road to and have a cheese and wine party. But is that your neighbour? Is your neighbour the person who is a struggling young mother and has young children to bring up and she's single? And the bills are piling up and she doesn't know where to turn for help or support or encouragement. Where's her neighbour? Where's the neighbour for the young, perhaps university student who's going to be away from home for the very first time? And after the excitement of moving into campus, he then has this terrible void in his life that his family is not there around him. Where is his neighbour? And what about is our neighbour the person who is on the street? who? has no one to love and care for them. Who will be a neighbour for that person? 
who will be the neighbour for the drug addict who has lost his way or she's lost her way who will be the neighbour for that person and this is what it is these were all my neighbours whether your neighbour is next door in your next street in the next town in the next city across the water that's where your neighbour is the one who needs the help the most you need to help that I have to ask for help. Help from the world community, help for volunteers to come, help for sponsoring our children so they can get an education. Any help is welcome, most definitely. But most of all, what our help we really need is your prayers. Okay, Moja Moja, I want two lines. This is something I can't I compare with perhaps how the Wild West must have been uh, years ago. There are no banks here, there's no post office, there's nothing here. It's a transit town of miners and ladies and street children. The women and the children are just totally left in poverty when the miners just depart to go to another mine. Life is life. It is our duty to help anybody and everybody. If you feel a yearning in your heart to do something to help to serve people, you make the first move. You go and help somebody. Be the change you want to see in this world. This world needs more love, not hate, not exclusiveness to bombard another religion or something like that, but just to encompass love, because love is the answer to the problems of this world.
If you refer to one of these children who has no mother and no father as orphans, you are going to stigmatise them for the rest of their lives. That is why Light in Africa only has children's homes instead of orphanages and why we refer to our children as children and not orphans. We believe that these children, when they grow up, they'll go around the world, around the country and be a good Samaritans. Jesus. What about you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello, yes, sir. my boy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, my boy. What are you doing today? Little cheeky boy. We have over 200 children in full time care in two regions of Tanzania. Today is a very exciting day for Lucy, who we've had since she was three years of age. She was abandoned by her mother because she has a cerebral palsy. So Mama left her with a neighbour and then ran off. <laughs> Are you excited about your new legs? <laughs> I just feel so much compassion for these children. They are just so precious, I cannot find the words to express. <laughs> you feel for the child, because this we've been coming over and over again and they keep making the adjustments and today we were told she would get her legs. Lucy's, of course, very upset. Once a month we have a clinic for all the children who have the HIV AIDS virus. We have a, a local hospital which comes and attends to our children where they will be weighed, they will be measured and they will um, be seen if they need to have a CD4 count. So this is a very important day for, for the hospital to come here and attend to our children. I love it. Yeah, they're adorable. They're cute. Um, they're sweet and polite, and um, and it makes you know. I mean, I basically live for this. To be honest, it's um, it's really rewarding when you see kids who were sick and they're better. <laughs> I mean, they seem to be very well taken care of and very well loved. I don't have like scientific evidence that it's the good nourishment that's making them healthier, but I just subjectively I notice that there seem to be fewer kids with CD4s that are falling and a lot of them just look really well and are growing better than some of the other kids that we see. The doctors was telling us last week we don't know what's going on here at Light in Africa. We do other clinics, but the children aren't doing so well. We only can put it down to that good food and when they're sick they get immediate medical treatment but they're missing one vital ingredient, and that is prayer. These children get prayed for. I feel proud that they have the Lord in their lives, that they know if they have a problem, that they pray. I feel privileged, so privileged to be able to be a part of their lives. And these are my treasures. These are my treasures on earth. 
Good night. Good night. Good night. God bless. It's about family. We are one big family.